Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel Diamonds and Washi. This is Katie and if you're new here, hi, welcome, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you are back, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a post review together and taking a look at my latest finished project which I am so excited to be sharing with you all today. So this piece is called Library Version A. It is from DIY Moonshop and it's legally licensed from the fabulous artist Cheruki. If you happen to follow me over on Instagram, you may have seen my progress and updates on this piece as I've worked on it over the past two weeks. And I am just so happy with how it came out and really, really thoroughly enjoyed working on this piece. Now it is pretty large. This is the largest size that was offered by DIY Moonshop. It's 60 by 86 centimeters. Um, I can't quite fit the whole thing in frame without distorting the picture and going to a wide angle lens, but let me turn it sideways so you can see just a little bit more of it at once. And I will go ahead and zoom you out just a little bit and just know that it might distort the picture just a bit, but there you can see the whole thing in its glory. So isn't this adorable? <laughs> As I mentioned, this is 60 by 86 centimeters. And um, if you're not familiar with DIY Moon Shop, they offer their pieces usually in a ver at least three sizes, a variety of sizes. This was one that when I saw the original artwork, I thought, okay, with the number and level of detail, that I'm seeing, I really think that going with the biggest size available is the way to go. And I think that was the right call because, oh my goodness, I feel like everywhere I look in this piece, every time that I look at it, I discover a new detail and I love it, love it, love it, love it. So again, if you're not familiar with DIY Moonshop, they make all of their kits to order. So there's a little bit of a turnaround time um, from the time that you order, but I find it to be well worth the wait because they license from some really fantastic artists, a couple of which are really my very favorites, and Cheruki is one of them. This piece was actually from my very first order from DIY Moonshop last summer. Um, <clears throat> if you've been around for a little while, you might remember me doing a post review on the very first piece that I worked on from DIY Moonshop called The Stars Who Listen from Margaret Morales. I will go ahead and link that up in the eye in the top right. If you'd like to go take a look, I'll also put it in the description. Um, but I was a little bit nervous at the time because I ran into one or two small hiccups with that piece and was nervous that when I got to this piece, since this was ordered at the same time and from the same time period, that it might have similar issues. And I'm very, very happy to report that it did not. So let me go ahead and share a little bit with you about some of the things I really loved about this kit. First and foremost, uh, the thing that you'll most often hear me talk about in my post reviews right off the bat is the rendering. That tends to be one of the things that I place the most, uh, emphasis on, the thing that I pay the most attention to and care the most about when it comes to my kits is really the charted rendering. Uh, because when it comes down to it, there's a lot that you can fix about a painting if need be. Um, you know, if you have issues with drills or issues with the glue or something like that, there are things you can take care of, but the rendering is kind of just what's set out for you, unless you're feeling really daring and just want to rechart things freely. But that's not relaxing for my brain. That's the, that's not something I really care to do. So as far as rendering goes, I have to say that I was completely blown away by the rendering in this piece. So it, while it might look sort of murky a little bit um, to you, this is actually really, really consistent with Cheruki's art style and sort of the overall vibe of her artwork where it does feel just really dreamy and really whimsical. And I think DIY Moonshop did such a nice job of rendering it. 
So when I started working on this piece, let me show you the top because I don't think that part's made its way in frame yet. Um, I started at the very top. And the only hesitation that I had with this piece and the rendering is this particular blue color that they chose here and in the corners, and it's kind of in some of the shadows. To me, that blue is maybe a little bit more vibrant than the rest of the piece reads, but like a lot of things with how DIY Moonshop will render, once you pull back and look at it from more of a viewing distance, it does come together really nicely. So even though I'm still a little bit on the fence about some of this kind of brighter blue, I do think that it works and it, that's just me nitpicking. <laughs> but when I started up here at the top and started working on it, it really did feel like as I finished sections and continued on, I kept discovering new details that I didn't realize were there before I got into this. Um, like, especially when you're up close, you cannot really tell that this is a plant with a trailing vine. But as soon as you pull back, you totally see that. And I think it's just beautiful. I think that DIY Moonshop does such a fabulous job of rendering and giving a finished effect that it's really distinct. And I think you probably either, you either like it or you don't. Um, it's very opposite from some other companies, but I don't think that any of these particular rendering styles is the wrong way to go. It's just going to be personal preference. And really, all of this post review is just based on my opinion and my own personal preferences. So always take that with a grain of salt. Um, I absolutely love the glow of this moon. I did initially kick around the idea of adding some special drills to this kit. At the time of my purchasing it, DIY Moonshop did not have one of their special treatment packs available for this kit. A special treatment pack is just an add-on that you can add on to your, your order of a kit that they have with most of their kits or a lot of their kits, that it's a mix of different special drills that you can use to enhance your kit. Like I said, at the time of ordering, this one did not have one available, and I thought, that's okay, I'll either do it myself, or this is such a muted piece, maybe it doesn't really need extra sparkler enhancements, maybe it's supposed to have a little bit more of a matte and dreamy finish. So as it turned out, I'm actually happy that I didn't add sparklers to this because I love the soft glow that it feels like. And it just feels like, really, this glows <laughs> beautifully. This actually is a good example of one of my favorite parts, favorite and also head tilt parts of DIY Moonshop's rendering style. They have a way of using these really vibrant colors. In this case, this bright coral that when I was right up in it, I thought, what is this bright coral doing in here? You see that in skin tones with DIY Moonshop quite often as well. I'll show you down when we get to the our little reader down here. But it's just one of those things that once again, when you look at it close up, you think this has to be a color mistake. And every single time I think that, and every single time when I step back and look at it from a viewing distance, I'm like, oh my gosh, that completely works and adds a really lovely, lovely effect. So again, I love how these, these books look so distinct. Can we talk about how I want to have a space like this someday that my children are not allowed, heck, my husband isn't allowed, that I just want for me. Um, I love this little like I don't know if this is sort of looks like a jar with some fairy lights in it and or something we've got our little lamp over here and then of course um, if you aren't familiar with Cherry Yuki as an artist she has a couple of really signature things about her artwork a lot of her artwork features um, this this gal with the like long flowing white hair often with a crown on her a little crown on her head and then these really adorable bunnies and look, she even has a bunny on her dress. <laughs> I love it so, so, so much. And we've got more of these lighting effects. Maybe these are candles and jars over here. But isn't the overall effect just lovely? I love it. I even love how 
they render this so that you can see these sort of details on the skirt of her dress and the shading in the book. So here's a really good example. I'm going to bring it up close so you guys can see, or rather I'll zoom you in, so you can see what it looks like up close. And then I'll zoom you back out gradually so that you can see how these colors that look really out of place even close up come together to form this lovely shading and rendering. So here, let's zoom in if this will cooperate. So see, she's got these corals, these bright corals in her face and in her neck even in her arms. The book looks muddy up close even. You can't tell it's a bunny. She has this like bright orange and coral in her knees. And then when we zoom back out, it just works. <laughs> At least I think so. You might disagree and that's completely fine. Um, anyway, I just really wanted to take a minute to share with you guys some of the up close really beautiful details in this piece because you know even though this took me two weeks to work on and felt like it kind of, it felt to me like it was taking me a long time um, but I really loved it I thought I might get bored with all of the grays and whatnot but as it turns out this was quite confetti heavy but of the respectful variety of confetti, not disrespectful confetti, because the confetti just made sense when it all came together. And like I said, I was pleasantly surprised at how much I really thoroughly enjoyed working on this piece. I did not get bored. <laughs> and I, again, I'm glad that I went with the largest size because otherwise I don't know that the level of detail would have come through as clearly. So some other things that I thought were really great about working on this kit in particular is Unlike the other, my first kit that I worked on in the same order, unlike the Stars Who Listen, um, I did not have any symbols on this kit that were too similar to each other. They were very distinct and they were clear on the canvas. I didn't have any trouble with that. As well, I didn't have any trouble with the glue. However, I, I still have sort of a working theory that one of the culprits of why I had trouble with the glue on the stars who listen was because I took off the plastic cover and replaced it with release paper. And I wonder if that, if the glue just hadn't quite cured enough yet on that kit and by replacing it with release paper, maybe there was something on there that sort of interacted with the not quite cured glue and made it less sticky. But thankfully I, had no problems at all with the glue on this kit. I even was using Patty Wax Super Sticky in my single placer for a good part of it, and the drills came off onto the canvas. So happy that those kinds of things that I had had trouble with before, I didn't have on this one. And it makes me think that the trouble before was just a fluke. So I will take it as a win. Um, I did also, which this has been my consistent experience with DIY Moonshop for the most part, I had all of these drills left over. I absolutely could do this kit all over again at least once. These are all the random like drills that I found that fell out <laughs> and, and trash drills, which there really wasn't much of that in most of the colors, but all these colors left and I still had three bags of like additional drills that I never had to refill the containers on. So I have found that DIY Moonshop sends you plenty of extra drills, which was definitely a good thing because in on one or two colors in particular, let me see if it will show up for you guys well. On one or two colors in particular, like this one, okay, let me show you. There was so much trash. It's like I got the bottom of the, of the barrel, of the manufacturing barrel in terms of like literally was this what was at the bottom? Because it has all these tiny, tiny little pieces in it, which is a little bit of a pain just because it kind of prevents the drills from lining up neatly for multi-placing. But quite frankly, this kit was so confetti heavy. I wasn't doing a ton of multi-placing to begin with. And when it came down to it, if I was using my multi-placer, 
those little pieces were small enough that my multi-placer didn't even really pick them up. So, uh, but as you can see, I had plenty, plenty left over <laughs> of those. So that's, that's just an FYI. That's not really a downside, not a huge downside for me because again, what I'm looking for is, do I have enough drills to complete my kit? without like a massive headache. So let me see, I had multiple bags of this color and one bag was much worse than the other. But there was a color or two, okay, there's a few in here. Let's see if I can get this to show up. So, where's my little pointer? Okay, right here. You see this drill right here with all of that extra resin pooled at the bottom? There's one here, there's one here. Some are more like visible than others. There's another here. You can see another here as well. So this color in particular, there was one other color that was kind of a culprit with it, had a lot of drills that had that extra resin pooled at the bottom. Um, really, this just made for inconvenience, again, with multi-placing, except this one was more problematic, mostly because this color was the one major bit of color blocking in this piece here at the bottom. This was almost entirely color blocked in that white color. So the problem was is if I tried to multi-place and I wasn't careful about it, and if I picked up the pieces that had the extra pooled resin in it, if I had too many of those in a row on my kit, not only would they not line up correctly, but they would push against each other and pop. So. This was a little bit of a pain, but you can tell I had so many, so, so many drills left over. I had plenty and was absolutely able to complete my kit. So to me, again, that's a minor inconvenience. It's not a deal breaker. Um, as always, when I'm sharing things that are things that I liked or things that were problematic for me. Um, this is all just my own personal opinion. Different things are more important to some people than others. And different things are deal breakers for others that aren't necessarily for me and vice versa. So that I think really covers sort of the pros and, and cons, I suppose. My good and not so good experiences with this kit, I think it's really safe to say that the good and the things that I loved about this kit far outweighed the hiccups that I ran into. Um, this might be my favorite DIY moon shop I've completed yet. I think this is my fourth or fifth kit from them. I love it. I love Cherry Yuki's artwork. I just, I want all of it really. <laughs> so I guess what it comes down to is would I recommend this kit? And it's a resounding yes from me, <laughs> if you couldn't tell. Um, if this looks like your kind of art style, and if the things that I loved about this kit sound like things that you would love and enjoy about working on a kit, then this might be for you. Um, DIY Moon Shop is one of those shops that is sort of on like the luxury end, I suppose, for lack of a better term, or premium end. Um, but I find that with a lot of companies, you get what you pay for depending on what your priorities are. I love that DIY Moon Shop licenses some really fantastic artists that I personally really love and that it's just a joy to get to work on their artwork in diamond painting form. Um, I like their process. They're a small family owned business and they're always, you know, try, they're always open to feedback and always adding new artists or new artwork from their artists. So for me, this was well worth it. I thoroughly enjoy working on this canvas. And while I don't, I get this question a lot, what I do with my finished diamond paintings. And I am, to borrow a term from one of my subscribers who commented, she's a, she's a knitter. I can't remember her name. Feel free to mention in the comments and say it was me. <laughs> I just can't remember off the top of my head. She had commented on one of my videos that in the knitting community, there are people that they call process knitters and product knitters. For some knitters, they're, they knit because they enjoy the process of knitting. For some of them, they enjoy having a completed product and using it in some way. For me, 
it's really about the process. I love having my finished product, but I don't hang my diamond paintings. They just, they lay flat in a really large artist portfolio. <laughs> and I, I save them because I love them, but you know, maybe someday if I have a reading nook like this, maybe I'll, I'll hang this up. But you know, it's, that's just, that's not why I do diamond paintings and that's okay. We're all allowed to do this craft for whatever reasons, you know, bring us joy. So just thought I'd preemptively answer that question since I tend to get it a lot in my post review videos that no, I'm not, not planning to hang this or gift it. I'm going to keep it, but it's just, it's going in an artist portfolio and I'll pull it back out when I do my month in review <laughs> so we can admire it again. But Anyway, I will be sure to leave a link to this kit in the description box below if you're interested in taking a look at it. Um, and of course, please let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or thoughts, or let me know. Do you like the finished product of this kit? And do you think that the end result you know, does justice to the artwork? Um, I always love hearing your thoughts, but... Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful for you, please consider giving it a thumbs up before you click away. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. You'll see lots of content like this, unboxings, whip and chats, tutorials, a whole mix of things, mostly diamond painting related, if not all. <laughs> so anyway, thank you again for watching. I hope you have a really wonderful week and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye friends.